come from anywhere and at the most unexpected of times and well we are here good evening to all the students who have joined us today we welcome you to the Baiju Science Studio where we try and see the world around us through an all inclusive scientific lens to bring a realization that sari branches of science we say physics chemistry biology they work as one in tandem as a unified entity isn't this so beautiful right and we are your host for today i'm saurab and, and i'm aishwarya and today building on the excitement levels of the cricket season we have designed an out of the park experience that they shouldn't miss right so students i hope that all of you are super duper excited we are live on both 628 and 910 channels and i need the excitement level to reach the roof right sir like today it should be out of the park itself right nice guys come on flood the chat yaar what are you waiting for kitna tayari hua kitna hype hai na <laughs> yes with yes. any song oh nice okay very good chiha so very good now of course we can see that many of you are here anirudh is here many of you are like ha ha yes of course we will do today sir our chat should feel explosive right yes like a filled stadium yes like a filled stadium i need to hear the roar come on <laughs> okay yes guys world cup season is on full swing no? yes I mean, we know what we do on weekends. तुमको पता है तुम क्या करते हो? पढ़ते तो तुम नहीं हो. क्यों? क्योंकि India का match होता है ना. Last match, it was you know 4.3 crore live watching. India news. Oh wow! And you were there. I know you were there, है ना? How many cricket fans are out there? Come on, everybody for But, India. Very quickly, why not? Maybe use. some interesting emojis out there and you can tell us that you're cricket fans maybe your bat and ball emoji that you can find and i know you're all very good with emojis we've seen you in live class so we're pretty sure they're going to be very good at it so jaldi jaldi se jo should be super duper high and tell us how many of you are cricket fans padhne nahi dete nahi yaar bolo khelne nahi dete padhne dete honge aisa nahi hota right nakshu okay oh these are mizu hey this is a this is a different name no All right ma'am kids are answering they love cricket very good i mean at this i expected but what about you do you like cricket or do you watch cricket see i don't know if right now what i'm about to say is going to you know i hope it doesn't go back against me but students i'll be honest i don't watch a lot of cricket but i used to play basketball in school and i know many of you out there know that i used to love playing basketball and you know so when i was in school and i used to play something that really used to maybe what i used to think about a lot is how science and sports right how they could work together normally at home they'll tell you you know pay attention in your studies many of you out there would resonate with this right P pay attention focus on your studies you know uh, playing sports is some hobby you can think about it later and you know very often right that's what we are told right <laughs> ye to hota hai yaar hai na pad lo pehle padhai zaruri hai hai na it's a very famous saying in in our, in our place also hai na hindi mein badi achhi kahawat hai ek padhoge likhoge banoge nawab वाह वाह है ना पढ़ोगे लिखोगे बनोगे नवाब खेलोगे कूदोगे बनोगे खराब इतना ही है लेकिन बट इट मीन्स भाई पढ़ाई लिखाई करो खेल कूदने में कुछ बट यू नो वर्ड दैट एग्जैक्टली व्हाई वी आर हियर टुडे टुडे विल ब्रेक दैट मिथ स्पोर्ट्स एंड साइंस दे आर्ट टू एक्सट्रीम्स दे ओवरलैप मोर देन यू थिंक एंड वन कैन बी यूज टू ब्रिंग द बेस्ट इन द अदर एंड दैट टू द बाइज वे So on top of that, so we have an exciting challenge for our students also, and you know what the challenge? Wait, should we tell them now? Ah, uh, okay, guys. Maybe we won't not. tell you the challenge right now. <laughs> we'll tell you there is a challenge for you. There is a prize for you, and there is a whole lot of motivation for you to watch this session till the end. So yes. you have to be regular till the end. and of course make it a point that you invite all your friends your family send it in all your friend circle your family groups tell everybody to join this class because it's going to be interesting super duper fun so on that note i have a question for all of you out there so here's a quick poll question so now of course sir as you can see when we talk about you know sports and science right when science especially as physics chemistry biology but which subject dominates the field of sports is it physics is it chemistry or is it biology 
Apol must be live on your screens right now. Or in case if it's not immediately live, just give us one or two minutes. It's definitely going to be there. And you have to tell us what do you think. So, sir, if I were to ask you, ma'am, you are playing with your hair. Why are you playing with them? I mean, see, if if someone yeah. asks me this, I won't be biased, but. I'm a fan of our wicket to wicket and goal to goal series. See, I know what Saurabh sir is going to say, yeah, and I know. I know what all of you are also going to say. So I have accepted my defeat here already. No, you don't know these guys. इनको अच्छा लगता है ना ऐसे ऐसे उल्टा उल्टा करना, right? I would say physics, but go with what you think. So yes, what do you think, ma'am? Physics. Maybe. See, I have a feeling it's going to be physics, and our team has given the result, Saurabh sir. Undefeated champion. I know, and this is what I guess. Seventy-seven percent of you have voted for physics, followed by chemistry. Oh no, followed by biology and then chemistry. Okay, you know we kind of predicted this that this would be the case. अब तुमको ऐसे नहीं पढ़ा रहे हैं बहुत दिनों से हमको पता तुम क्या सोचते हो है ना? Yes. So, I guess it's time to see firsthand what happens when sports meets science. Yes. Right. So before we move further, ma'am. It's okay. Kids say it's physics first. I mean, seventy-seven percent. <laughs> That's kind of proud moment for me. But I think we can move forward. And you know what? I'll show you a few videos. And before I show them to you, just listen to me very carefully. Think of the science connected in all of them, right? There's something connecting all of them, right? So, ready? Can we have the videos, please? Wow, sir! Those were some fantastic visuals, right? What we just saw, yes. Although, amazing. Baseball, we don't play, but you know, we we don't play baseball here. But guys, what do you think? What could it be that is connecting all of them? Yes, come on, be creative, yar. Sorry, sir. I saw that they were all lot of exciting visuals, but lot of visuals of many men and humans. I didn't I didn't realize <laughs> when I was uh, placing these videos together. Yeah. Yes, but you know sports expands to all domains. Yes, obviously. Yes. <laughs> Guys, come on, be creative, yaar. Kya lagta hai tumko? What so do you think? So we will have the comments coming up on screen, but we need some very exciting comments, right? So I made some interesting observations, but now I need it from you all so very quickly. So sorry for some exciting answers coming in front of us, right? Yes. Ooh. All right, okay. all right. Bodies must okay, nice. That's that's good. That's good. Guys, come on, come on. Ha. Huh. Okay. So some of them are saying that there are muscles involved, right? Some of them are saying that there's a lot of competition involved. In sports means yes. it's competition, right? Sports means competition, injuries, everything, yeah. right? Okay. So all of these sports, no? Ah, force, momentum. So also you've taught them well. Yes, <laughs> and you have watched a series well. I would say that also. Nice impulse. impulse. Oh. Aye, aye. Kya yes. Baat hai? Kya baat hai? Full Newton's third law. Nice, nice. Friction. Okay. Okay. So now listen. All of these sports, no, like cricket, football, baseball, whatever you see. I'm going to make a statement now, and I'll prove that statement to you. Okay. Okay. All of them, all of them, are a game of levers. Lever. You mean while producing glycogen storing metabolism driving fat emulsifying liver so you know where you're going with this right that's my territory yeah i See? should have known it'll, it'll, it'll just come back to me <laughs> guys it's it's not liver it's lever lever the simple yeah. machine we are you know we make mistakes when we say that right yeah we normal phones yes asmita mam will be there and she'll be laughing yeah hai na ma'am you are enjoying <laughs> this so okay Right? So I'm saying all of these they were a game of levers. Okay. So right? Shall I prove it to you? So I know say? you want to prove it to me. <laughs> yeah, you know I see I won't stop. Even if ma'am doesn't want I, I won't stop. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, guys, tell me, shall we see how it's a game of levers? Yes or no right now? Because for that I have to take you to a special place we have created. Yes. Oh, so so that is what you were working on earlier. Yes. You see the stage is big. <laughs> It's grand now, right? And we'll do it in style. Of course. So we have this area called as the activity arena. 
there. I'll take you and ma'am. You also? Yes. We'll explore how levers come into picture in sports. What do you say? Okay. How about we go, sir? Yes. Follow me to the activity arena. I said levers, right? Levers, it's one of the six simple machines we have been using for a very long time to make our work easier. But when I say simple machines, what do you think? And guys, what do you think? What is a simple machine here? Well, well, if you go by the literal name, it is a simple machine, machine. But, but of course, in that case, we would maybe get, get to do some action by, by flying force. You're right. Simple, Simple machines, machines they, can they can change the way your fly force, they can, they can either, either make your work easier, easier right? So, so Simple, Simple machines, machines, it's right, and I'm actually quite impressed. Guys, come on. Nice, very, very good. good. Nice, Rahul. Rahul. Good, good answer. answer. Hina, nice. nice. Alright. All right. So, yes. So, yes. Simple, Simple machines, machines sorted. It. It's, it's supposed to be simple, and that's why. We have kept it very simple. It's, it's a wooden, wooden plank, plank kept on, on this triangle. triangle. Look, looks like a piece on Yes. Yes. So, so simple, simple machine. machine. This is we call as a lever. Right? A lever is simple, a wooden plank kept on a support. This support is called as the fulcrum. Okay. On fulcrum, this lever can go here and there, right? And a see saw it. Simple. Right. So this is my fulcrum. Now ma'am, if I give you this one kg weight, okay. And I ask you to lift it, what would you do? I will lift it like dumbbells. <laughs> nice. You want these after no. after this show? <laughs> okay. Look, watch. To lift this one kg, you are yeah. applying force in the upward direction. Hmm. Natural si baat hai, hai na? But if I keep this one kg weight over here. Okay. Right. And I ask you to lift this one kg weight or load, if I may call it. Hmm. Where would you apply your effort on this side? Well, sir has given me the answer, so I will do this. Nice, right? Easy. But do you see what you did there? You are lifting this load up. Okay. By applying an effort in the downward direction. Ah. Right? Then I did the other action. I actually did it in the upward direction, right? Yes. Oh, I didn't. And know actually, you know, that. applying force downward is easy. You can just fall on this, <laughs> right? It's easy. Yeah. Correct. So it has changed your direction of force. Mm -hmm. You applied force down, but load is lifted up. It's one thing a lever can do. Makes your work easier, right? Now, I said this is my load. Hmm. And its technical term is load. Okay. It's easy to remember. Right? Load is something you want to lift. Okay. Okay. The distance of load from this fulcrum is called as the load arm. Oh, okay. Again, load has load arm, right? Yes. Simple. Now, on this side, if I keep this another weight, it will become my effort. The force you are applying, no, I'm just hmm. putting weight for that. It's a one kg weight, okay? Okay. It'll be my effort. So if I keep my effort. Hmm. It's balanced right now. Yes, like all our vegetable vendors. Ah, right? yeah, normally you'd see them, right? They'd keep all the vegetables on one side and they keep adding these weights on the other side and at one point they say, okay, take it. <laughs> you have been using simple machines. Bahut log use kar Bina soche, hai na? right? Now, this particular segment where effort is on that side, mm -hmm. load is on this side, okay. right? It's called a class one lever. Oh, okay. In class one lever, fulcrum is in the middle. This oh. is my load. The distance of load from the fulcrum is the load arm. Mm -hmm. This is my effort. Mm -hmm. The distance of effort from the fulcrum is my effort arm. Ah, oh, easy. But you know, to balance on both sides, if you think this load arm, if you take a product of load arm and the load, okay. It should be equal to my effort multiplied by effort arm. Oh. So there's a term for this. We call it the moment. Okay. This is the moment of the load. Load multiplied by load arm is called as the moment of the load hmm. on this side. Okay. If that becomes equal to the moment of effort on this side, that is effort into effort arm. Okay. It gets balanced. Ah, easy. Right? Class yeah. one lever is simple, no? Very simple. Rose khelte ho, see saw, hai na? Right? I mean. You might be grown up, but maza bata tha, na? Yeah. Hai na? It was fun. Life was good when you were kids, right? Now, things will change if I shift my fulcrum closer to the load. Okay. Now you can see it's not balanced, no? Yeah, it's looking a little unequal. Right? So, if I keep one more kg, you can lift this. Okay. 
this is 2 kgs right now on this side okay right load arm is shorter yes compared to the yeah, effort arm right yeah. do you want to lift it from that side it's very easy no this is so easy right i'm lifting 2 kgs and i'm barely putting any effort you can lift 3 kgs also you know you are very strong yeah <laughs> right very simple very simple <laughs> it's actually easy this is 2 kg over here it's a half a kg okay 500 grams no if i keep this one here we just lifted 2 kg is using 500 grams yes how is that possible sir it's possible because when fulcrum is closer to the load hmm. the load arm is smaller okay right compared to the effort arm oh. right so whenever load arm is smaller compared to the effort arm hmm. it becomes easier for us to lift the load okay you can say i have to apply less effort okay this lever is giving me an advantage mm -hmm. A technical term I'll give you mechanical advantage. Okay. How much load you are lifting divided by how much effort you have applied. Okay. Is the mechanical advantage. Ah. Right. So this particular this particular segment right now this particular theme we have right hmm. where we have fulcrum closer to the load. Okay. This is a load multiplier or I would say force multiplier. Oh. Right. Less force, more lifting. Nice. Okay. If I shift it on this side. If I shift it like this. Okay. Now, if I have to ask you, ki bhai ye do kg aapko hai, us se. It should what be easy, think? right? I mean, it should be more or less easy, I guess. Let me try this. Okay, not at all easy. Need some effort. More than what I was using before. <laughs> That's true. This here, you have to apply more effort. Hmm. And the change we made in the same, same setup is now load arm is longer compared yeah. to the effort arm. Exactly. Right. So to lift a 500 gram weight, I have to put one kg. Put one more kg. Where is my one more kg? I have it here. But kids, do you think that putting one more kg is going to make a difference? What do you think? Kya lagta hai? Ek aur mein uthega hai. What do you think? Maybe, sir. I think most of them may agree with me. Maybe. This one more kg may make the difference. But <laughs> so we literally lifted 500 grams using 3 kgs. While on yes. the other hand, I was able to lift 2 kgs just using 500 grams. Yes. What is this physics? So you have to tell me now. <laughs> In this case, I want you to notice one thing. So yes, you're right. For this, the mechanical advantage is less than one because you are applying more effort. Mm -hmm. Load is less compared to the effort, right? Okay. But you just notice effort has moved this much distance. Okay. Sorry, the load has moved this much distance. Okay. But the effort has moved only this much distance. Oh. Right? Your effort is moving a slower distance, the, the le lesser distance, but your load has moved this much distance, mm -hmm. right? It's a speed multiplier. Okay, so basically here the distance covered is much greater when compared yes. to maybe the earlier case. So your load travels farther compared mm -hmm. to your effort. So this is called as a speed multiplier. But but the problem is you have to apply more effort, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So this was all about class one levers. Class one levers can behave as load multipliers also. Okay. As force multipliers also. Okay. Right. And examples to were very easy. Seesaw. Yeah. Right. Can you give more examples for this, guys? Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. I told you. You have been using all of this. Yeah, I would need some help for this because I'm not able to think of many examples. But maybe, sir, off the top of my head, I'm able to think of maybe scissors as an example. Is that right? Are you all with me on this? Is scissors a correct example for this? Scissors. Thing? What do you think? Is ma'am right? Yes. <laughs> nice, yeah. That's true. Scissors. It's an example. Wherever you have hinge in between, no. It's a class one lever. Okay. And if you are thinking, sir, you said sports. Why are we talking all about levers? Hold on. <laughs> Throughout the segment, no, just keep thinking. Is there a connect? Because there will be a connect and you will see it. Okay. So this was ma'am all about class one levers. Now, for class two and three levers, because okay. there are three classes of levers, mm -hmm. I want you to shift it on this side. That's right. Yes. Right? Okay. Just give me a moment. Okay. Now. Oh, now the setup looks quite different from earlier. Fulcrum is on one extreme. Huh. Fulcrum is on one extreme, 
Now, if I keep my load here, okay, in the center, right? in the center, so load arm will be this, yes, right. Uh, this is my load arm, and you have to lift it from that side. This part. So that is going to be your effort. Not bad. I'm able to do this. Easy, no? Right. So do you want to challenge me and put one more? Hmm. I can do this. <laughs> nice, no? Right. <laughs> yeah. But do you notice your load arm hmm. is smaller compared to the effort arm? Oh, yes. Whatever you do, wherever you keep your load, your effort will be always on one extreme. So your effort hmm. arm will always be more than the load arm. Means this will always, always be a force multiplier. Oh yeah, like we saw earlier. Yes, right? Okay. So whenever effort arm is more than load arm, it's a force multiplier. Okay. Simple. But if I keep my load over here. Then I have to apply effort here? Yes, you have to lift it from this side, from the center. Guys, do you think it'll be easy or difficult? Come on, now answers <laughs> should come. Yeah, actually before I lift it, you guys tell me. Is it going to be easy or difficult? I have a feeling this is going to be difficult. So I will not ask for a challenge. Look, if I smile, it's not difficult. Yes. Oh, sir. Wait, I'll hold it from you. <laughs> this is not easy at all. Yeah, it's I need difficult. a lot of effort to do this. Correct. Exactly. And the thing we all should notice, that load arm is always, always greater than the effort arm. Because your effort will be in the middle, right? Yeah. This will always be a speed multiplier. Its mechanical advantage will always be less than one. Hmm. Then why do we use it? Because? Speed multiplier. You're right. You are moving your effort only this much, but load is moving more. Yeah. Right? So wherever you want speed multipliers, you use class three levers. This is a class three lever where okay. effort is in the middle. Hmm. Previous one was a class two lever where the effort was in one extreme and load was in the middle, right? right. Um, can you give me examples of like class two and three levers? Class two levers, students again, I need your help for this because you know that I'm going to probably maybe give one example, but we need more and more examples from all of you. Guys, show but... off here, come on, what are you waiting for? <laughs> but maybe I think class two levers, sir, I think nutcracker, maybe, nice. mm, okay, if a nutcracker is right, then maybe mm, bottle opener. Nice. <laughs> Use it in the Nipo. You have used a lemon squeezer? Yes, you have garlic presses also. Garmi aati hai, thanda thanda pani mein dal ke ekdam must nimu ke. Maza nahi aata hai na? Kya hai wo? It's a class two lever, yar. And class three lever, yar, tongs. Roti wala chimta. Right? That's a class three lever. Yeah. Right? Now, I know. All of us are thinking, sir, lever lever pad liya. Sports ka baayega? We learned a lot of physics right now. <laughs> yes, we learned a lot of physics right now. And that's how we teach, no? We give you something, then we teach. We started with all those, all those videos, right? Hmm. Players were doing some other action, cricket, yeah. football, right? Hmm. Tennis. I'll take one example. Okay. When a bowler bowls, hmm. right? They swing their arm like this, yeah. right? This ball is my load. Yes. That's the fulcrum. That is my fulcrum, right? And I'm applying force to move this ball through my arm, yeah. right? My effort. So this is a class three lever. Oh, wow. Right? Same thing. Just take any of the examples we just showed. Mm -hmm. Right? You, sh you, you saw all of them, no? Hai na? Tumne dekha to unko. Mm -hmm. They were class three levers. Right? In all these high intensity games where you want speed, you want mm -hmm. to hit sixes like this, you want to throw fast, it's speed multipliers. You want speed, you will use speed multipliers. Your body is working as levers, right? Yes. That's brilliant. Understood? Okay. Ma'am, I think... We have learned so much about levers. Yes. We just made a connect also. Exactly. I think it's good time, no? These guys should just summarize everything. Yeah. Hai na? Like a quick recall quick of recall. whatever we've learned so far. Theke. But chon, let's do a quick summary so that you just don't forget everything, no? I'll do a quick summary and for that, I'll move over there. Ma'am, can you follow me? Wow, sir. That was awesome. We learned Full so much. bodybuilding you did, no? Yes. Now, I have built the dolas and I can answer questions now yes. if you ever ask me questions. Papiya Suhani, you guys were right. <laughs> All right. So, kids, we have learned so much, no? Let's summarize everything very quickly. So, what did we learn? Let me tell you. Let's have the summary. 
Levers are one of six simple machines, right? We learned about what is called as moment of effort, right? It's effort into effort arm. What is moment of load? It's load into load arm. Now, when things balance, when both the moments become equal, and that's how mechanic advantage becomes what? Effort arm upon load arm or load upon effort. So this was about MA or mechanical advantage. Then we learned about three class of levers now. Class one lever. This was where fulcrum was in middle, right? And effort and load were on either side. Example were pliers or scissors. Then we learned about class two levers, right? Where fulcrum was on one end and effort was on another end, right? So this was an example of uh, nutcracker, right? Lemon squeezer, bottle opener. Then we learned class three levers. It was where fulcrum was one end and load was another end. This is the example of speed multiplier. This was tongs or spades or shovels. So, whew. we learned so much, sir. We learned so much, and I know. See, throughout this, I could read all your comments, and I, I was, I was seeing that. Yes, you love the learning, but there was one question, sir. Sports, sports, kaise hai na? You saw the bowling action, right? Yes. So, yes. So, ma'am, do you think our students they have learned enough? See, our students are very smart, and I know that when you learn with us, by Jews, you know that you will be able to solve the questions that we give you. Hey, how about we test them? Ha! Huh, why not? Let's hey, do that. Do you want? Do you want to see how much you have learned? Because how I have a test for you from Byju's the Learning App. Oh wow! Okay, sir. How about maybe let's say I team up with my students. We are one team. Okay, against you, you guys are one team. Yes. All right. So I'll open a question, and for that I have to cast my phone screen. Okay. okay, guys, can I cast the screen? I will open the app over here. Okay. Oh, you can see sir's screen now. Ah, nice. I'll go to Force and Simple Machines. <clears throat> okay, and sir. And I'll go to this Active Learn section. Fine. All right. This yeah. is levers versus goblins, and ma'am, all yours. Stage, okay. Guess. Now what do I have, you have to, to do? balance it? Yes. <laughs> hey. We learned so much. Oh. Yeah, hey, I just wanted to see what will happen if the goblins ate up everything. <laughs> okay, I need to balance this. 10 kgs and I have a 5 kg chicken. Students, where am I going to put this? Come you can on, tell guys. me in the chat. Help, help, help. Um, okay, thinking back to whatever you taught me, I think I will go with. Come on. Da -da 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 -da. Four up. Yeah, four. Yes, I'll do that. Yeah. The bowl is balanced. balanced. How yes, about we beat that, the goblins. Sir. Yes. And that was easy. That was easy. That was fun, more important, no? Exactly. We used the concept of moment that we just learned. Multiplied load into load arm. It made sure that that is equal to effort into effort arm. Yes. Thereby it's a balance. Guys, don't you think this is this is the new way of learning, right? You, you should have fun and Simultaneously, you learn also. That's what we call as the Baiju's way. Visualizations, it's a game which will teach you all about balancing of levers. So go ahead, download the app right now. Baiju's the learning app. It's just one thing you saw. It's full of surprises. Go and check it out right now. Yes, that was so cool and interesting. And you know, Saurabh sir, thank you so much for taking us through this game of levers and enlightening us about all the different types of levers that are there and how we apply them in sports. But you know, throughout your whole explanation, there was one thing that caught my eye. And I, actually from that time, I've just been thinking about it. And that is the bowling action that you showed. Can you do that once again? Can we have a ball, please? Guys, shall I do it? And yes, How many of you studies? want to see Saurabh sir in cricket action? I'm sure you are all Saurabh sir's fans and I know you want to see that. So Saurabh sir, how about... Do it in style, I would All say. All right. I'll show you how we throw the ball. And Comfy Studies, you're right. It's so amazing, yeah, because it is amazing. Okay. See, I'll throw the ball the way I showed you. Like this. Oh, wow. So, kids, quickly, if I, we were to recall from Saurabh Sir's explanation, can you recognize the fulcrum, the load, and the effort in his action? So very quickly in the live chat, we need to see the answers and you can use short forms also. You don't need to type the whole thing. You can just use L, E and F, right? To give yes. us the answer. Just be quick. Very quick though. So Saurabh sir, in the meanwhile, you did the action. Yes. And what category would you put that in? Class three levers. Okay. And in that case, what would the different parts be? So I'll simplify it for everybody. I'll just assume this motion only. Okay. I'll say this becomes my fulcrum. The ball becomes my load. Okay. And my arm is giving the effort. So class three lever. But like you said, 
you simplified it which means we have taken a very simplistic model now don't think that in our body it's this simple now i'm sure that when it comes to biology the things are a little more i would not say complicated but a little more cohesive now of course we can't just think of it as okay some bones some muscles some tendons and ligaments they're all coming together and they're working with different mechanisms right because then if that was the case you have all bones tendons muscles ligaments let's say ravindra jadeja also has that then there is some difference that we observe yeah, right there's a lot of difference actually <laughs> of course so what is it that separates a normal human being let's say any common man sorry sir and me as you see on the screen versus let's say a professional athlete does this mm -hmm. mean that they have something that we don't do they, does this mean that they have different bones and muscles and we have different bones and muscles is there some difference so i understand see the difference i feel is ball is same both of us are throwing the same ball okay the difference could only be the fulcrum and the effort maybe right? maybe load is same correct yes so students if you are also with saurabh sir you let me know in the live chat and i'll be answering all your questions in this segment where bio meets physics okay so now of course that we are going to be talking about a lot of biology saurabh sir is also i'll say pseudo bio expert no bio expert okay fine he's also a bio expert so then saurabh sir along with all of you out there i need all of you to name some different joints in our body right oh is this so easy this is what hinge joint knee joint elbow joint ankle joint pivot joint okay uh, shoulder joint wow um, pivot joint Okay, I can see. I think I. I now, sorry, sorry, set a wall. <laughs> yeah. Examples have run out, but I'm sure that you're all out there giving me the answers. Now, when we talk about joints, right? So, can we have a visual, please? So, when you talk about joints, joints are basically a point where two bones meet, right? Now, we see that these two bones are connected, as you see in the next visual, with the help of ligaments. Now, of course, sorry, sir, movement cannot happen only with bones, right? We need something else. What is that? muscles exactly so now of course we need muscles as well for movement and muscles are connected to bones with the help of tendons so so far are we all clear students we're all clear right we're all on the same page now so it's a very interestingly you gave me a lot of answers and in that one joint caught my eye pivot joint right talking about pivot joint it's a perfect example of class 1 liver system and i'm going to tell you how in just a bit so i need a small help from you okay i need sort of sir and you guys can also try this out what are the different kinds of movement you can do with your head and neck you yeah, are getting a feeling i am the lab rat in this segment no he is we going to have sort of to do a lot of challenges today okay you, you guys are okay. going to have a good time now so movements from my neck Haan, okay. all possible movements you can think of crazy movements also uh, one could be this easy peasy one could be this okay and one could be that <laughs> this <laughs> right good one so good one so now of course all these movements he was able to do this because of the pivot joint now what is a pivot joint let's see on our screens a pivot joint is basically a joint where one bone is fixed while the other bone moves about it and you know what we have this pivot joint in our head and neck region and you know so also when you think of bio one more thing comes to your mind right mm -hmm. when especially we see the names in biology don't ask me <laughs> I quit bio that's why after 10th and many of you out there would also say the same thing that ma'am so many terms to learn in biology one more thing just a name for you to know the atlanto occipital joint very fancy name but you can see on your screens right now the atlanto occipital joint is a joint which you find right so it's going to come on your screen soon don't worry so the atlanto occipital joint is what connects the part of your skull with the first vertebrae right and that is what we call as such now if we move on to our next video where we see a certain movement we see that we are able to let's say move our head back because of the muscles so now sir sir do you know why i called it as a type 1 or a class 1 liver system yeah but i see my friend over there he sits alongside me <laughs> yeah Yes, I can see it now. See, the the joint becomes the fulcrum. Yes. One side, my skull becomes the load. Yes. Right, and the muscle gives me the effort. Yes. Right. So the muscles contract, and that's why we are able to do this action. Ooh, that's that's nice. 
Okay, so class one liver, I understood. I understood ligaments. Yeah. I understood bones connecting things, tendons. Okay, but okay, muscles. When you say this muscle is making me go like this, okay. is this the same muscle which is making me go like this? What an interesting question, so students. What do you think? Is it the same muscle, or is there some other muscle involved? I know you know the answer to this, and I want you to go ahead and give us the answer in the live chat, right? Yes. Yeah, so now, of course, when we talk about muscles, so muscles work in pairs. They kind of like friends. They help each other out. So if we saw this muscle doing a duck, helping us, you know, go backwards or lift our neck, lift our head, sorry, uh -huh. then we have another set of muscles that help us do the opposite action. So they work in pairs. Exactly. Oh, that's nice. That's is it antagonistic? Yes, it is also called as antagonistic muscles. I thought first protagonistic, <laughs> then antagonistic. Oh. Okay. Now, of course, see, in the case of athletes, you understand that they are also prone to a lot of injuries, which is why training their neck region and the neck muscles is extremely important for them. Because you understand that when they train it well, especially in contact sports like basketball, right? Basketball, football, where collisions are possible. There could be a lot of energy, right? D due to the collision, a lot of energy can have an impact on the brain. But these joints and muscles, when trained right, can actually help them from this. Ooh, so stronger neck, stronger game. I mean, I have seen guys, <laughs> CR7, the, the header, right? So yes, okay. Strong muscles and greater is a better is your game, right? Yes. Okay, but I have one more question. See, how about training? I mean. I see players train a lot. I know. Right? Correct? Does it affect this whole thing? The muscles, the joints? Oh, wow. Now, before I take Saurabh sir's question, and I want all of you out there to tell me how many of you, right? How many of you out there play any kind of sport, right? I'm sure that if you play sports maybe in your school teams, I'm sure that you will have regular practice, and I'm sure you all agree with me. Now, what is the reason for that practice? Or I would say, what is the reason for that training? Nice. Purvi had a good question. Ask, yes. She's saying, ask sir to move his upper jaw. <laughs> How about Purvi, instead of asking sir to do an upper jaw, how about we challenge Saurabh sir to a push-up challenge? Push-up challenge? Yeah. Here, right now? Yes. How many of you want Saurabh sir to do, let's say, 5 to 10 push-ups? Jaldi, jaldi, say live chat mein, we need to see. Yes, 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 with a lot of fire emojis. Only then Saurabh sir is going to get agreed. I mean, he's going to agree to this. Hey, I'm not doing it. You, if you say, then only I'll do it. Ma'am ko to help me. <laughs> Saurabh sir, no. You have to do this, right? This is for our students. Kitna they, five, na? Five. Shall I do it, yes or no? Karna chahiye. Are we getting a lot of responses? The team is going to give us a quick thumbs up. Oh, they nice, all want nice. Saurabh sir. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thick hai. Are you ready? Five. Sir? You'll I'll, do five. I'll, I'll see. Yes. Okay. Ready? Okay. I'll be your coach now. Yes. Let's have a closer view of Saurabh sir doing push-ups. Sir, let's have the close view and then okay. we'll get started. Yes. We have our view ready. Ready. Okay. Ready. Wait. I have to count. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Sir, you're slow. Five. One more for bonus. Six. Seven, one more. Okay, done. Yes. <laughs> so they want thousand push-ups. Thousand push-ups. Yeah. Please. Okay. So also, thank you so much for being such a sport and doing this. But you know, when you do push-ups, right? You know what kind of muscles get worked or what kind of muscles get trained in this process? Huh? You always think it's biceps and triceps. But to be honest, as you can see. It's not just the biceps and the triceps, but it's also the pectoral muscles. So can we have the visual, please? Yes. So here the pectoral muscles, the biceps, the triceps, they all work well or they all get developed in this process. Now, apart from this, we also see that it engages our core muscles or our abdominal muscles. And thereby, we see that it improves strength building. It improves, you know, a lot of upper body strength rather, I would say. Yes. Yeah, ma'am, you can be a gym trainer, as Asta says over here. Today is all about training, you know, lifting. Exercise. Gym. Exercise, right? But do you see, it's a, it's like a sandwich. Sports, padhai aata beech mein. Chukke se, right? Okay. 
So, so that way, Saurabh sir, you see, you've built your abdominal muscles, right? And if you have a look at the next visual, we see that on doing regular training and exercise, it builds your muscles, right? Especially, it strengthens your upper body. This gives athletes a lot of explosive power. I mean, when you look at Dhoni hitter six, there's a lot of explosive power. Or when Virat hits that four, that yeah. explosive power that comes from the ball being able to go all the way there, right? I mean, I get caught out normally. <laughs> okay. okay, guys. I'll not get carried away. I'll be careful. <laughs> oh. But, you know, when I was doing this, because I'm still stuck on livers 2 biology, I was thinking which liver is it? Guys, what do you think which liver is this? Huh. I did not tell you that yet. Yes. So let's have our students identify this. As you can see, you see the stance behind you, right? Sorry, so we can give them some space. Now, what do we observe, Saurabh? So you can maybe explain it to the kids so that maybe they can identify. Yes. Guys, which liver could this be? Yes. Uh, obviously. See, this becomes the fulcrum, right? Your effort is coming from your arms. You're pushing from your arms. No, That's your effort. And your center portion, your core becomes your load. This is a class 2 liver system, right? Right? Yes, of course. And along with this, using this kind of a lever mechanism, we are able to train our body. But sir, have you ever wondered how our muscles get developed? I say so many exercises are there and you see, you know, after some time, they're all saying, I'm doing bodybuilding and becoming gym trainer. Then after some time, you see that muscles will increase and you would see that there's more mass. Yes. Rather, right? Have you wondered why? I'm sure huh. you would have. Yeah, I mean, gymming, you get tired a lot. You feel like for, for, for a few days you can't lift anything, you can't move your hands, but then your muscles also build up, right? Exactly. Am so, I right? Almost. Close enough. But we'll understand this better because you see, biology is nothing without visualization. So in this beautiful video, we will understand how muscle development takes place. Can we have the video, please? Every, Every strand, strand of muscle fiber, fiber has, has a, a certain, certain threshold, threshold of stress, stress it can bear. bear. When a cricketer indulges in weight or resistance training, the limits of the muscle fibers are pushed and they undergo minor damage, forming micro tears or cracks that alarm the body. Now, when the body rests, the regenerative cells spring into action, fusing with the damaged muscle fibers, filling the tear and repairing the damaged muscle. This damage and repair cycle repeated continuously over time leading to an increase in muscle size and mass is it's called, called muscular, muscular hypertrophy. hypertrophy. Wow. Damage Amazing, and right? repair. I mean, it would have taken a class to explain this properly, no? Probably. But can you believe it? We've just wrapped up this beautiful ideology and concept in just a bite-sized information for all of you. Nice. Impressed, right, Saurabh, sir? Muscle development happens with a lot of wear and tear, but there's a lot of building and increase in mass as well. I mean, you work out, you wear and tear your muscles, and they'll keep building up, right? Yes. As simple as that. So you, you need to work hard. <laughs> but, Ooh. Saurabh, sir, you told me, we've still not forgotten the question, that type 3 liver system is the most common one in our body, right? That's how I started. Yes. Now, a very common example that you gave me at that point, yes, was how you moved your hand. Yes. Now, do you know what joint this is? Uh, hinge joint? Very good. So, how about we have a look at what is the hinge joint on our screens? Now, a hinge joint is a joint which we normally find in our knees and our elbows. And the movement is kind of like a door hinge, right? Just forward, backward motion. Now, if you talk about this joint as a class 3 lever system. So, so how about we refresh their memory with our next visual? Ooh. Similar is the knee joint, right? Exactly. The knee becomes your fulcrum, the ball here becomes your load and your calves are giving you like the power, the effort? Yes, but this is what I told you was a very simplistic ideology that you said because when we talk about a kick, a throw or let's say taking a cricket shot or using a tennis bat. 
it is not just one single joint that is involved. Now we saw how different parts of our body need to be trained for this. And now let's understand how all that training amounts to them using this power explosively. By how about watching another beautiful video? Okay. Let's watch this video. That as, as the, the foot, foot goes, goes back, back the, the player's quad stretch. The knee muscles flex. The hip muscles overextend and the trunk twists towards the non-kick side. Also, notice their arm on the non-kicking side. It's pulled back, stretching the deltoids, aligning it with the shoulders, forming a C, a tension arc, that stores up the elastic potential energy within the muscles. Now, the arc unleashes into a quasi-whip-like motion wherein the stretched muscles across the body immediately contract in unison, forming a backward C, a shortened arc, converting all the stored potential energy into kinetic energy, bringing to life a kick, kick of, of epic, epic proportions. proportions. Wow. I mean, I, I, I agree. The model I took was a very simplistic model, and just in this kicking action, there's so much coming into play. Exactly. So students, if you play any kind of sports and of course, if you love what you do, right? Training and of course, you understand now that how important training is. So having constant, consistent practice is very, very important. And this also helps us improve our accuracy because practice makes one perfect, right sir? That's true, that's true. Shorya, yes, you're right. There is way in which you can look at it. The knee is bending, I'm expecting all of this to be rest, right? All of this to be static, that's why. All right, so guys, that's true. Discipline is very important, consistency is very important, and that's the same thing with, not even sports, with studies as well, right? Yes. You study every day, and that's why we say, make a timetable and study every day. This is a way of telling you how you are studying without even know you are studying. Exactly. Right? So, quickly to summarize whatever we have learned so far, let's have a, it on our screens. We learned about lever systems in the human body. So now, of course, we saw that there are different classes of lever systems that we observe in our body as well. So if we were to take a class 1 lever system, an example of it would be the atlanto-occipital joint that we find in our neck region. And we see here that the joint functions as a fulcrum. So lifting of the head is an action that we observe here. Now we also observed how training is important for these neck muscles so that it reduces risk of injuries. Moving on to class 2 lever systems, we observe it in a push-up stance where the fulcrum is the feet, the load here is the core muscles, I mean the core that is there and the effort is applied by the muscles. Now the up and down movement is possible because of this and we saw how important training is. And this we concluded in our next class which is class 3 lever system. So in class 3 we took the example of hinge joint and kicking as an action. And we saw how they all came together and it helped us in seeing how athletes perform an explosive action, right? Now of course along with this we also learnt about muscles, yes? So now when we talk about muscles, as we can see on our screens, right? Okay, so we saw that muscles are those which work in pairs and we see that we have a pair of muscles that help in different types of movement. Next, of course, we saw and learnt about muscle development as well and how it improves in muscle mass. So with the students, I hope that you enjoyed this segment where bio meets physics. If so, don't forget to send a lot of emojis in the chat. Man, I didn't even realize we learned so much in this segment. I know, right? But you know, while you were summarizing, I'm sorry, I kind of uh, drifted away. I know that. Because I was thinking of something. In, in physics, no. Always after force, the chapter comes of energy. Right? Okay. So here we understood muscles, everything nice. I understood so much force is generated, but how do they maintain this energy? Like throughout the game, they are so oh. energetic. What's I did five push-ups, but if you do me, if you ask me ten more, I would say sorry to you. So, okay. So let me tell you all one thing, right? When you talk about energy, and I'm sure all of you can give us the answer here. You know how energy is produced in our body. 
across grades we know how energy is produced so in this case the process by which energy is produced is nothing but respiration now respiration is like glucose is broken down sir which releases atp right and our body utilizes this atp easy some some garib log ke liye kuch hai simply put it's almost like burning glucose Hey, burning for me, burning means Let me lighting you, sir, things I'm on sim- fire. I'm simplifying it. I'm oversimplifying it. I hope you know that. Uh huh. But still, burning. No, yeah. There's a lot of chemical locha in my head right now. Chemical locha. Yes. Wow. I can see that our sir is now at that chemical locha. Now, what do we do, sir, when we are stuck at something like this? Yes, like this. I think we should call an expert but before that guys you are learning so much do you realize how will you revise all of this right before we go to our expert before we go to our expert just think about it you have learned so much here you have learned about livers you have learned about all this in biology how do you revise all of this is there a good way there is the byju's app yes so we have this very interesting feature on the app and if we could have it on our screen right now you would see that the byju's app has some amazing features that would help you revise effectively we have these beautiful summary slides that are there and of course important questions that will help you get exam ready along with tech solutions as well so wow and to support this we have practice and we have tests as well so don't forget to download the app and by the way we didn't tell this to you this feature is free Yes. go ahead explore it out right so ma'am as i was saying to solve my chemical locha i need a chemistry expert and yes. kids you all know who is our chemistry expert right what do you say shall we call her shall we call our dear masoom teacher on screen how many of you are excited to see and interact with our masoom teacher woo you call her See, she's in the lab. Hi, ma'am. Hey, Saurabh sir and Ashwarya ma'am. What's up? We are here at the Baiju Science Studio, and our students are here with us, and they're super excited to see you. Hey, that's great. Hello, students. Hope you all are enjoying the science studio. Yes, ma'am. These guys are enjoying it, and you. They were missing all of you, you know. Ma'am, I have a question. How can we say burning of glucose is giving us energy? But it can't be burning, no. please explain this to me how does it work well why only talk about it when we can actually do it the why juice way yes ma'am we agree with you right now let's do it chalo for this i need you to go to the activity arena first let's go let's go to the activity arena sir yes Okay, Kriti ma'am, ma'am we are here at the activity, activity arena. arena. Now, please, please tell, tell us what we need to do. Cool, awesome. So the hero of this experiment is glucose. So first of all, I want you to collect some glucose. I think this is. Uh-huh. Yes, this is glucose. <laughs> all right. Now you require a test tube and a test tube holder. Yes, ma'am, we have that ready. Awesome. Lastly you require a spirit lamp and a match stick or a match box. Okay. We have think better. We have a lighter. <laughs> chalega chalega. I I can see you people are all set and you have everything. So let's get started. So first put some glucose into the test tube. Okay ma'am. All right. Thoda sa aur. Ah. Awesome. Now just light the spirit lamp and start heating the test tube. Okay, ma'am. Done. And all of you here, observe carefully what's going to happen because I'm going to ask you a question towards the end. I can see Saurabh sir and Ishwarya ma'am. They are busy. experimenting right now meanwhile i can quickly give you an overview of what's happening so what they've taken is glucose and now 
we are heating glucose that means it's going to combine with oxygen and we all know what this process is called it's called combustion so carbon dioxide and water vapor are going to be formed let's go back and check if that's happening or not so over to Ishwara ma'am what's happening right now so ma'am we are very um, with a lot of enthusiasm we're heating this glucose and we can see some gas evolving and so some very weird thing Pipi, it looks scary it won't burst no <laughs> so your observation skills are on point i can see you people are actually carefully observing so we see there is a gas coming out i don't know but which gas ah so i think you can check this for yourself all you need is lime water do you have lime water there with you no lime water we don't have ah okay not a problem what you can do is just bring a burning matchstick near it and observe what's going to happen okay mm priti it's safe no <laughs> over to you sir depends on how you perform it Hey, it extinguished. Yes. So can you guess the gas now? I think it's carbon dioxide for sure. Full marks, ma'am. Full marks. So yes, kids, this gas is carbon dioxide. And what's happening over here? Recall the fire triangle for this. So for fire triangle, we require three essential components. We require oxygen. We require fuel, and we also require heat. That's the ignition temperature. Now, if one of the components are taken away from this fire triangle, then fire will not be able to burn, will not be able to burn, right? So we won't have any fire basically. This is what carbon dioxide is doing over here. It's basically replacing oxygen. That's one of the essential components. And due to this, the flame is dozing off. And ma'am, I can see some droplets of water on the test tube. And there's also some black gooey gooey thing here. So what is all this? I mean, your observation skills are definitely great. I must say. Now, coming to that black substance, I think before I answer this, let's ask kids. What is this black substance? Come on, I want to see some random guesses and why guesswork here. I think you all know the answer. What is this black substance that is being formed here? Let's check the chat for some interesting answers. all right i can see mix of answers in the chat some of you are saying oh a lot of you are guessing it's it's something to do with the amount of oxygen and not bad you people are actually right that black remnant that you can see is unburned carbon and you know this brings us back to the original question what exactly is different when it comes to burning when it comes to combustion inside and outside our body so inside our body you know when glucose is combining with oxygen so at that point of time the oxygen supply is constant through respiration that's why complete combustion takes place and this is a very slow process but in the test tube that saurabh sir is holding right now and constantly eating some glucose i can see in between so what's happening over there we have glucose we are again heating it it's combining with oxygen but the products that are being formed that is carbon dioxide and water vapor so they are coming up and now they are blocking the supply of oxygen that means the supply is insufficient now and we all know when the supply of oxygen is insufficient then it leads to incomplete combustion and that's why you see that black substance over there so this is the basic difference and thankfully this doesn't happen in our body so yes we can all chill <laughs> Wow, ma'am! Thank you so much. I mean, with the help of this interesting experiment, we were able to, you know, decode such a simple difference that was there. Right? Burning of glucose gives you CO two, H two O, and energy. Yep. So thank you so much, Kriti, ma'am, for joining us and helping us out with this. I'm sure that the students also appreciate the fact that you've come all the way and helped us out with this very interesting experiment. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. I hope you've enjoyed performing the experiment and kids. We have a lot more happening here, so stay tuned and keep enjoying the Baiju Science Studio.
बाय बाय कृति मैम बाय मैम थैंक यू बाय बाय बट यू नो आई थिंक दिस वाज नाइस एंड आई लर्न समथिंग वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट राइट बर्निंग ऑफ ग्लूकोज यस गिव्स अ सीओ2 वाटर वेपर एंड एनर्जी बट इफ ऑक्सीजन सप्लाई इज नॉट इनफ इट गिव्स यू कार्बन आल्सो राइट एंड यू नो I did an experiment few days back. Okay. And back then I could not figure out why I just enjoyed the show. Okay. But now I realize if every particle of this sugar, this hmm. glucose, every particle if they get enough oxygen, hmm. it can behave like a fuel the way it fuels our body, right? It gives okay. us energy. It's a nice experiment. I want to show all of you. For that I have to take you there. Okay. Shall okay. we go there? Yes. Come on. Let's go. Oh yes i really want to show this video to all of you yaar ready yes let's have a look can we have this video please Wow, so you told me you wanted to show a crazy video, but I didn't think you were going to do something so crazy. Students, please make sure that you do not try this at home. Right? Very, very important. But sir, like it was amazing. Just, it was just glucose. Every particle was getting nice oxygen, and it burned like a fuel. I felt like those stuntmen. No? <laughs> oh, nice. No, we learned yes. so much. But sir, from that, you actually figured something out, right? That there was constant oxygen supply for that. Yes, you're right. No unburned carbon means oxygen supply should be good. In our body, it means athletes have good oxygen supply compared to me. At well, least. sir, in the difference, I would say is the fact that when, if you've noticed, right, and I'm sure you would have read about it, and students, I'm sure you are with me as well. There's a certain way in which you regularly breathe, right? And you make sure that when you train, you use your lung capacities to the maximum, so that you try to produce energy to the maximum, yes, or as efficient as possible. But in our body, it's not just one energy system where you use oxygen to produce energy. We also have a process by which it can happen in the absence as well. So we have anaerobic respiration. So in our body, we have multiple energy systems coming into play that helps us achieve the kind of things that we see on screen when Ooh. athletes when athletes perform. I felt bio and chemistry is ganged up on me, <laughs> but I think we have learned so much chemistry in this section. Why don't we just summarize it very quickly? Sure. Right. So in this particular segment we learned about combustion of glucose inside our body right where in glucose is broken down in the presence of oxygen in order to give out carbon dioxide and water as by products but of course mainly it releases energy and this energy is utilized for various activities and yes we learned about fire triangle you need three things oxygen heat and fuel and co2 cuts oxygen supply and that's why things don't burn right so ma'am that was great yes. but, and i think we have ticked all the boxes exactly. physics done in sports bio also done chemistry also done right i know right one idea and sports in all perspectives covered in well i mean i would say in a good manner right yes analisa you're right you're right so guys we promise you something in the beginning right we promise something in the beginning we told you if you stay till then and that's why people who stay they get something yes people who stayed let us tell you the challenge of course so we told you that there was an exciting challenge and this challenge is a small task where you take up any sporting action and of course of your choice right and you explain all aspects of it just like we did you could talk about the physics the chemistry and the biology involved but so what do they get if they do this top 3 winners from each channel will get gift hampers and yes just send your entries will contact you everybody just go crazy huh? choose diagrams choose video just explain the science you have regarding the action you have chosen okay physics chemistry bio whatever you have learned it's time to apply and win that's important yes 
The link is available in the description of these videos. So go ahead and quickly share it with all your friends as well, right? So I hope that all of you enjoyed the first episode of Baiju Science Studio. And if you love the videos and the way we taught, go ahead and please check out the Baiju the Learning app where you will find all this amazing information. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the channels as well. Yes, check out the series. And now it's time to show you what we have been doing for many days. Ready? Ready? Can we show the reality show? Go like, share and subscribe right now because a lot of effort goes in creating this for you. This is our team, the amazing team we have. Tell us in the comment section how you feel and what you want. Yeah. Up until then everybody, take care, lots of love and bye-bye.